Okay, y'all, I'm going to make this video to help myself remember, and hopefully this can help someone along the way too. I am working on the Henderlin dress, and there are darts. So this is only my second time sewing darts. You can see it in the picture that there's like this curved point that comes out. That's where the darts are going to be. So over here, there's just a lot of words which for me personally are really hard to interpret. Um, so I just kind of am breaking it up into step by step. So what I did first was I used chalk to draw these lines, which these lines are also in the pattern. So I'm just copying the pattern, which here's the pattern, for example. So I just copy that right onto my fabric. And this is the point which is also called the apex, I learned. So then I'm going to match up these lines all the way up to the apex. And that's where I'm going to sew along those lines with a very slight curve right before I get to the apex so it doesn't leave like a weird nipple mark. Okay, and then after I sew it, I'm going to iron it down like this. And it should lay pretty straight. You could see the seam line right here. It's pretty straight against the seam line. So that's just prepping it, getting ready for sewing. Now let's give it a whirl and see what it looks like after. Okay, I got my needle ready. You're sewing from the outside in. The apex is right around here. You can barely see it. So I'm going to sew along this line, slightly curve in at the apex. And when I start to curve in, I'm going to move my dial over here to a little bit tighter. I don't know what that's called, um, but the thread length is going to be a little bit tighter once I get to the apex. So I'm going to do that now and then show what it looks like after. Okay, so I'm ready to sew my shoulder seams at 5 eighths of an inch. Um, and if your sewing machine is like mine, it's really basic. It's because I'm still a beginning sewer, um, I had to figure out like, what do these lines mean? And where this hole is on mine, I actually had to measure it to figure it out because I couldn't find anything online. Right here is half an inch. So half an inch is four eighths of an inch. And I know that that's gonna be five eighths of an inch, six eighths of an inch, seven eighths of an inch. So in the directions, all of the seams for this Hinderland dress are five eighths of an inch. So I'm gonna make sure that the whole time I'm sewing, this lines up with that line. I'm just gonna go sew my straight line and then zigzag to close it up. Okay, I just pressed it. On the back side, this is what it looks like. It's pressed all the way firm down, and then I just kind of dug in right here. It says in the directions um, that when you press the dart flat, you should use a pressing hem or a rolled up towel. I didn't do either one of those, so hopefully it's going to be okay. Um, so this is what it looks like on the front. Looks pretty clean. It looks like a little puckered right here, but I think that once I actually put it on, because I kind of fitted it to my body, and this lines up nicely with the breast area, which is like right around here, so it should line up right there. Okay, so that's how I made my darts. All right, now I'm on an easy step, but I thought I would just share this for beginner beginners, because I know this was a little difficult for me to get at first. So I had to pin the side seams and the shoulder seams. I'm getting ready to sew them, as you could see. Um, and the directions, it, whenever you're doing this, it always says right side facing. Um, and with this, I know that my right sides are facing because the darts on the inside of the dress are out. So the right side is inside. On the back of the bodice, it doesn't really matter right now because I have a solid print, so I can just decide later. But I'm gonna call this the wrong side right here. This is the right side facing the right side over here. 
And then I'm going to sew 5 eighths of an inch. Um, and then I'm going to zigzag to close it up. So I'm doing that on all four sides. I'll come back to show you what that looks like. Okay, so I'm ready to sew my shoulder seams at 5 eighths of an inch. Um, and if your sewing machine is like mine, it's really basic. It's because I'm still a beginning sewer. Um, I had to figure out like, what do these lines mean? And where this hole is on mine, I actually had to measure it to figure it out because I couldn't find anything online. Right here is half an inch. So half an inch is 4 eighths of an inch. And I know that that's going to be 5 eighths of an inch, 6 eighths of an inch, 7 eighths of an inch. So in the directions, all of the seams for this Hinderland dress are 5 eighths of an inch. So I'm going to make sure that the whole time I'm sewing, this lines up with that line. I'm just going to go sew my straight line and then zigzag to close it up. Okay, so here's what my side seams look like. I sewed them in at 5 eighths of an inch. And right before I zigzagged, I trimmed off with scissors the excess. So over here, this was um, a bunch of excess fabric. So the word that I learned for trimming that excess fabric is called grading. You grade it first and then zigzag. So I don't have this big flap of fabric sticking out when you turn it back inside out. So I graded and I zigzagged on all four of those points. And now all I need to do is open this up and iron it towards the back. So the side seams, all of the seams should be facing the back of the bodice. That way, when you open it back on the correct side, on the right side, all of these side seams, sorry, all of these side seams won't be puckered like this. They're going to be flat once I iron it. And then I'm ready to move on to the skirt. Done with the bodice, the next line, the neckline, I'm going to save for my last step. Okay, so I finished sewing along the seams and I am skipping these, this step. I don't really need to do that. Um, I'm gonna wait until last to sew my neck facing. Mine is a little different. I'm just gonna do bias tape facing. And then armhole facings, I'm also a little lazy. Instead of putting in the sleeves, I'm just gonna cuff it myself. Um, that's one easy thing you can do if you don't wanna do all these extra steps, especially if you're new and you're a little overwhelmed. Okay, and then the reason why I'm not going to show these steps for entering in the sleeves is because I know that all over YouTube there's a lot of tutorials already on that. So I'm going to skip that. I'm trying to do tutorials for things that I just have had a hard time finding myself on YouTube. Okay, so here I am on step 12 and this is gathering stitches. On the skirt before you sew it onto the bodice so again like there's a lot of words and if you're like me reading a lot of words like this um, is kind of like decoding and a lot of different language and if you have any kind of language barriers it might be even more challenging for you so I wanted to show I'm not gonna show all of it because I want to send you to a reference on YouTube that I found um, this is a really, really great trick for sewing gathering stitches. Um, you're going to get yarn. I happen to have yarn because I've been learning how to knit. Um, and instead of using two strings, I'm sorry, two threads, um, you would usually, that's what the directions kind of tell you to do, is um, two lines of basting stitches, which is like on my sewing machine, a basting stitch would be this this one right here because it's the widest. But I found on Instagram an amazing sewer. Her name is Tabitha Sews. She also has a YouTube video under Tabitha Sews for gathering stitches. And she recommends placing it on the widest zigzag. So for again, for my Singer Star, it's a very beginning sewing machine. This is my widest. And what's so cool is that you just zigzag across 
the yarn and without touching the yarn. And when you're done doing that, all you have to do is pull it. And it's just so much easier than using basting stitching because when you baste along these, what I found is that a lot of times the thread rips um, and it's just really frustrating. So again, I'm gonna send you for this part, if gathering stitches is still tricky for you like it is for me, use the yarn trick, Tabitha Sews. Find her on YouTube, she's amazing. Okay, y'all, I finished the gathering stitches with the zigzag Tabitha Sews method and I have yarn there. Um, I've kind of pinned the yarn into place so it doesn't fall out. And now I'm on the step right here. Um, it's 12B where you need to attach the bodice to the skirt. There, This picture to me is just not really helpful in visualizing what I need to do. It says, um, I don't know, it's just a little confusing. I'm not even gonna go over what it says. So I figured out um, through trial and error what works for me. So my skirt right now is inside out and my shirt is right side out. You can tell it's right side out because remember when we sewed these earlier? It's on the, this is inside out, this is right side out. Okay, so I always double check that as a beginning sewer because I often sew things in the wrong way. Okay, and then I took the shirt Here's the skirt and I just stuffed the shirt inside of the skirt upside down and maybe that's what they did in the picture I just don't know because I need more steps than that so now what I'm gonna do the shirt is inside of my skirt right now I'm gonna match up the seam with this seam so here's the right side of the shirt I'm gonna match it up with the right side of the skirt on the inside I'm gonna pin it there I'm going to do the same thing for this side and I'm going to pin it there. Then I'm going to pin all the way around. So I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, I finished pinning everything into place. And this is what it should look like all the way around. And now I'm going to come over to my sewing machine. I was on zigzag. You should have been on zigzag if you were using this yarn method. I'm going to move back. This is one step that I always double check, moving back to my normal stitch. This is my stitch. And then I'm gonna sew a straight line, five eighths of an inch. And again, as a reminder on my machine, this is half an inch, which is four eighths. So I know that's gonna be five eighths. So I'm gonna sew all the way around five eighths. And then I'm gonna rip out this yarn and turn it inside out and show you what it looks like next. When you're sewing your seam on your gather, something that I learned and remembered from Sonia Phillips, 100 acts of sewing, is um, my left hand is right here guiding it, but my right hand is always underneath, just feeling to make sure that the bodice, which is underneath here, that this is always flat as it's entering so when I was lazy about that and just sewing through in the past, I noticed um, some little puckers on this side. So again, my left hand's guiding, but my right hand is underneath just feeling to make sure that the bodice is always flat before it gets sewed to the skirt. Just a quick tip that I got from Sonia. Here is my skirt attached to my bodice. So this was the zigzag from when I had the yarn, and that's gonna stay right there, but that's okay. Nobody will see that. And then this is the 5 8 seam line, and then I went across the top all the way around the bodice and the skirt to zigzag and close it up. That way it doesn't fray. Um, if you don't have a serger like I don't, you will use zigzag to close that up. Okay, let's see what it looks like on the right side of the dress. I um, didn't come across any major mistakes when I was 
um, sewing these two together, no puckering or anything like that. So I just like to check, ooh, it looks great. Oh my gosh, and when you finish something like this, it feels so good because it's kind of time consuming and um, yeah, it's just, it just feels great doing something new that you're trying, you know, like this dress to me is more of an advanced beginner dress. I wouldn't have done this like uh, maybe six months ago. Okay, so everything looks good and I just like to check all the way across. You should do that too. And then I'm gonna um, flip it back inside out and, and iron it. So that way this crease is really nice and it sets the stitches in as well. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it. The easy part now is working on the hemline. That's super easy for a beginner. That's really easy. I already hemmed the sleeves. And um, like I said, I'm not gonna do the facing, um, I'm gonna do a bias tape facing instead, just because for me that's easier and faster. Um, and yeah, look, oh my gosh, look how beautiful. I know it's hard to see because it's not on a hanger. I'll put it on a hanger. Here it is in all its glory. It's gonna be so cozy. I will take some pictures later and you'll see it on my Instagram account if you follow me. Here's the front. It has inseam pockets. Yes, this dress is so cozy. Um, viva la mujer, right? We work so hard and we should feel good about the work that we do. This um, was really challenging for me, even though a lot of people said on Instagram it should be easy. Not everything is easy when people say it's easy. So stay strong, keep doing what you're doing, and have fun.